Hey, what's up, guys? This is Eric coming at you again, EJD715 uh, from the Vinyl Community. Uh, I'm going to talk about a trip I took this weekend out to Amarillo, Texas. It's, you're probably thinking that's kind of a strange destination. It's about six hours from my hometown. Uh, my fiance has a friend she hasn't seen like in 10 years. So we decided to go out there and check it out. I've only driven through the city, I've had some bad luck there. Stories for another time. Um, however, excuse me. While they were catching up, I decided to uh, go vinyl hunting. I went to three antique stores, I didn't find anything there. So then I decided to uh, go to the local Hastings. For those of you that live in this area, in the south and southwest, you probably know what Hastings is. For those that live out east and stuff, you probably don't know what Hastings is. Hastings is kind of like a media, super media superstore, I guess you could call it. Books, tapes, CDs, records, magazines, coffee store usually in the corner. Uh, they always have a lot of good deals and some Hastings have a lot of vinyl. And this one in Amarillo had the biggest vinyl selection I've ever seen, at least for a Hastings. But uh, first things, um, I went through another town on the way home that had a smaller Hastings, so I decided to stop. And I found uh, some good dollar CDs, so let's go through those first. First things first, Led Zeppelin Presence. This is the original release, not the remaster. Uh, I like this album. A lot of the albums from this era I didn't really care for, like House of the Holy. And like I said, I'm not the biggest Zeppelin fan, but this one I've liked since I was a kid. I have it on vinyl as well. So this one and Led Zeppelin 2 were probably my favorite Zeppelin albums. Um, but yeah, I was lucky to find this for a dollar. Can't believe it. It's in my dead mint condition too. All right, changing gears a little bit. Uh, here's a band that I've been into since well, about the last 20 years. It's a new age band, one of the few new age bands I get into, Tangerine Dream. Uh, this has some of their killer songs from the late 80s, early 90s. There's a song from their album, Lily on the Beach. It's called Too Hot for My Chinchilla. It's a really awesome driving song. I don't know if anybody of you guys are in the new age, but I'm not into a lot of it, but this is very moody, kind of almost proggy. In its, in its makeup, so it's kind of got some dark passages and stuff, which is more akin to what I like. I mean, I'm a metal guy, so I like this band. I think they're cool. So, Tangerine Dream, it sounds incredible on my stereo, even though it's a CD. I'm sure their vinyl sounds awesome. I don't have any other vinyl. Tangerine Dream, it's called The Private Music Of. It's kind of a compilation. Good album, one dollar. Keep of Kalisin. Uh These guys are a nuclear blast. Uh, they're kind of like a Norwegian black metal a little bit of folk in there, a little bit of Viking. Mostly black, but it's not really like like a black metal band like a Demu, Boyer, or a Cradle of Filth or anything like that. It's very kind of technical, some thrashy elements in it too. Um, I've never heard this one. I have their two of their other albums and they're pretty good. I gave this one one listen last night and it's pretty good. So uh, it comes with a DVD as well, so I gotta check that out. It's kind of a gatefold kind of a thing, I guess you may say, for a CD. So uh, keep a Kelisin. Uh, the album's called Colossus. So, uh, pretty good. Especially for a buck. Uh, here's a, this is a goth metal band from Finland. They're called Entwine. I, I heard one of their albums 15, 12, 15 years ago, and I thought it was okay. This isn't a dollar bin, this is an EP. It was a cutout originally. You can see there, it's got a cutout, but somebody re put a new case on it. Um, it's a, it's actually a, a European pressing, it's a, I think the German pressing. Um, I gave it a short listen last night, it seems pretty good. So I'll uh, probably rip it to my uh, MP3 player and play it on that. That's really the only reason I buy CDs now, is just to rip them on MP3s. I mean, I'll, I'll play them in the house, I'm doing chores or something, I can't, I don't want to flip a record. But uh, overall, I really don't listen to many CDs anymore, as much as I used to, especially. Alright, I found two albums from a band that I remember on Headbangers Ball back in like early 90, like 93, 94, they were really big on there. Called Life of Agony. Uh, I did some research on it. This album is considered a classic from like the early 90s alternative metal. And I remember two of the songs, the videos I had for them. I didn't care for them at the time. I think they're pretty good now. This one is a lot, apparently a lot different. I haven't given this a chance yet, but actually I haven't listened to either of these. But. Uh, this one's called Ugly, this is from 95, this one's from 93. Um, Life of Agony, kind of a different band. Apparently the lead singer has become like a transvestite or something, so there's no hope for a reunion there, I guess. Onward to, this is a CD I used to have a long time ago. 
fact, I bought it when it first came out in 98. Jerry Cantrell, Foggy Depot. Um, I haven't heard this in a long time. For a buck, I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't deny it. Couldn't pass it up. So uh, another one I'll rip to the uh, MP3 player. I've always been a huge Allison Chains fan. So here's a band I've never gotten really gotten into, but they're kind of they're different. They're kind of in the King's S, King's X kind of style. Galactic Cowboys. I haven't given this a listen yet. But uh, from what I remember from these guys, they're a little bit different. So I, I guess you got to listen to this a couple times to uh, get a good uh, gist of what it's all about. So uh, a dollar. Again, these are all a dollar. Can't go wrong. So I'll give it a try. It's called Black the Cowboys at the end of the day. All these are in great condition, too. Um, I did buy one that was really scratched. I didn't even put it in here. So I had nine. It was uh, Billy Idol, Vital Idol. But it was really mangled. Like, I didn't realize it when I bought it. Because it was in, like a little rapper. I took these all the rappers. But uh, it, the first two tracks, three tracks didn't even play. So I was like, Pfft. so I pitched that one. Okay, onward to the uh, the Stack O vinyl here. Um, first things first, I'm going to start with with used albums. I got some really nice ones here. For some were a dollar, some were two dollars. I still have the price tags on them. So first things first. Rat, Dancing Undercover, one of my favorite Rat albums. It's not my, it's not my number one, but it's definitely on the, on the top three. Uh, this, this album has some killer songs. One Good Lover, great song. Slip of the Lip, Body Talk is like almost thrash metal. Um, it Doesn't Matter is a really good song. There are some songs on the second side that 7th Avenue, eh, okay. But uh, this is actually a German pressing. It's an actually, it looks really crappy from the rapper. But I took it out and it's a nice glossy cover. It's got a little bit of rag, like press wear. It's not ring wear, but it's, the vinyl's pressed through the cardboard, so it has like a little indentation, so to say. This the vinyl is in mint condition. 99 cents. Can't go wrong. So it's the German Atlantic label. As you can see, it's uh, real nice. The thing about these Euro Euro pressings from Atlantic, I noticed this with my my Rush uh, counterparts, because they have like a little liner inside them. I mean, that's brilliant. I don't know why they didn't do this in the States. From, you know, that prevents you from all the stupid surface scratches from those shitty paper, paper sleeves, you know? I don't know why they didn't, I don't know why the American companies didn't, didn't put those on there. Doesn't make sense to me. But uh, anyways, I got a nice, this is, this com doesn't really complete my recollection. I'll find Reach for the Sky and Detonator. Those are pretty easy to find, but I've passed them up a couple times, but for a buck, I couldn't go wrong on this one. So, Rat, Dancing Undercover. Let's put them over here, I guess. All right, this one's kind of mangled, but I I haven't seen it in a long time. And when I do see it, it's a little bit on the expensive side. Gary Moore, Victims of the Future. I mean, this one, you can see the, it's got ring wear, it's got corner wear. It's pretty mangled, but the vinyl, it's pretty good, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, this is an awesome Gary Moore album. I have the greatest hits, and uh, a lot of the songs on that are on this, which was an early 90s CD that came out. This is a great album. So Gary Moore, Victims of the Future, very happy to have this one. Um, I think my favorite from his is Wild Frontier. I gotta find that one, Stolen Vinyl. Yeah, that cardboard's pretty mangled. <laughs> Alright, some of you are going to be like, wow, on this one. <laughs> pretty classic record. Except Balls to the Wall for two bucks. Still in the wrap. Uh, it's perfect condition. I, I'm very happy with this one. This was, this was probably the $2 find I had. The best $2 find I had. It's the Portrait Record version. It's just a U.S. copy. Really good condition. I haven't cleaned it yet, but it has no scratches on it whatsoever. Other than maybe some of those, again, stupid paper paper sleeve uh, surface scratches. But for two bucks, except balls of the wall, can't go wrong. Alright, let's go move it on to some uh, 80s kind of uh, synth poppy. Nah, not really synth pop, just pop. Uh, I haven't heard this one yet. I really like this band's first album. I think it's a fantastic uh, debut album. It's kind of like their one hit wonder, so to say. It's Mr. Mister. Uh, the album's called I Wear the Face. I haven't heard this ever, so it'll be interesting to see what this is like. 
I, like I said, that Welcome to the Real World album, phenomenal 80s rock album, if you ask me. So I'm very uh, excited to, to listen to this one. In fact, I'll probably play this tonight. This was a $2 album. It's in pretty good shape. It's got a little bit of your normal $2 ring wear, corner wear kind of thing. It has a small cutout, but uh, I've never seen this before, especially for two bucks. Had to get it. All right, so uh, this one, I've never heard this band, but it looked kind of cool. It's, I don't know if it's prog, I don't know if it's pop, I don't know what it is. It's from the mid it's called It, it Bites. The album's called the Big, Lad, the Big Lad and the Windmill. Uh, it's a promo, as you can see up here. It's got the promo stamp up there. So, uh, I don't know, if any of you guys know what this is about, let me know. Uh, I'm pretty kind of uh, curious to know what, this, what these guys are like. So, uh, It Bites. $2. Here's one I've seen numerous times, but for much more money than this. This one's in pretty clean condition. It has very light ring wear, especially for two bucks. Steve Winwood Chronicles. Of course, this has all the great hits from, you know, like, if you're a kid of the 80s, you've heard of, like every one of these songs. Uh, Why You See a Chance, Valerie, Ark of the Diver, Higher Love, Take Back the Night. Uh, have back, that, uh, this doesn't have Back in the High Life again. I'm surprised, surprised it doesn't have it. Interesting. But, uh, Steve Winwood Chronicles. Alright, there's another band that you'd be, probably be surprised that I have. I actually like these guys. I'm not a big folk guy. I think for this style of music, they're probably the best. Uh, these were both 99 cents. Seals and Crofts, greatest hits. And Seals and Crofts, taking it easy. Um, I listened to these guys as a kid. So uh, I kind of liked them in my childhood, kind of memories, kind of thing. But this, these are both in really good shape. I mean, this, especially this taking it easy. It's uh, really nice, gateful. It's still really stiff. I mean, as you can see, nice piece for 99 cents, especially. No ring wear or anything. Uh, the greatest hits, it's pretty clean. It's got a little bit of ring wear, but it's not too bad. So uh, yeah, 99 cents. Very happy with my my used haul from that store this is now again these are all from the Amarillo Hastings all right onwards to new vinyl hold on a sec these are all sealed so they're very slippery all right first things first death angel this dream calls for blood um I saw these guys live last year and I really thought I've actually saw them live I think I've seen them live three times the last two years and I really like what they have on these new albums, but I've never bought them. I'm still a fan of their old stuff, so I haven't really given the new stuff much of a chance. So uh, for 20 bucks, I couldn't pass it up. Brand new, exclusive tag from Hastings. This dream calls for blood. Can't wait to crack this one open. All right, for some of you Swedish death metal people out there, melodic stuff, exactly, uh, for sure. Excuse me. Resistance Scars. Now this band features members of The Haunted and In Flames, former members of In Flames. Uh, it has kind of that Stockholm kind of entombed grave slash um, dismember kind of a tone to it. Real sludgy guitars, um, not very much tone, just a real like dirty, nasty kind of tone. It's cool though, and I really like Marco Aro, the vocalist. He's he's the vocalist of The Haunted. He's really good. He's a really cool guy, too. I've met him a couple times. So I've never seen this in vinyl. I think it's probably sold out in most places. The Resistance Scars. Pretty cool. Alright, here's one I've passed up numerous times. But I decided to buy it. Now, I remember when Zom came on high school, I remember going to my local Best Buy and buying it that day on CD. Slayer Divine Intervention. I love this album. In fact, it's probably my second favorite Slayer album. So many people were going like, what? Um, I'm kind of one of those oddball people, I guess. I like a lot of albums that a lot of people don't like. I mean, my favorite album from them, South of Heaven. But uh, Slayer Divine Intervention. I don't even know if this was released on vinyl when it first came out. If it did, it was 1994 and there wasn't probably much made. So uh, Slayer Divine Intervention. Pretty awesome. Hold on one sec. Yeah, flip, the, flip the album.
<laughs> All right, sorry about that. I need to know how to edit these stupid videos, I guess. Um, <laughs> here's one that I've passed up many times. Rush Vapor Trails Remastered. Um, I don't really, this isn't one of my favorite Rush albums, but my, all my friends that have this say, give this a try because it'll kind of change your mind on this album, so I'm hoping that it'll, it'll do that for me. And I picked it up for, almost well, $30, but, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Rush fan, as I said in my previous video. I want to have the whole Rush collection, at least as much as I possibly can. I know there's a couple of those, like, Test for Echo, that's probably impossible to find. And I think the original of this is impossible to find from a friend of mine here in town has told me. So, uh, I decided to pick this up as, like, my Vapor Trails uh, part of the collection. Even though this came out, like, last year as a reissue. So, uh, Rush Vapor Trails Remastered. Alright. I can't read the logo because it's old school. Uh, this is Catatonia. They're kind of, now they're kind of a goth metal band. Very moody, cool. This is more of like more of like black metal back then. They had like growling vocals and blast beats and stuff. The newer stuff is much more accept, like commercially acceptable, you may say. But uh, I like the old stuff too. In fact, uh, I have this patch on my. I'm making a patch vest, which I'll probably post in another video. I have this patch with this logo on it. It's gonna be right on my front, right, right here actually. Um, I've never heard this album actually. I have all the albums after this, but I don't have this one. So this is a reissue. The original of this is worth a lot of money. So I decided to buy it. I've never seen it in the store, so. Catatonia, Dance of December Souls. All right, here's one I've been wanting for a long time. This is a reissue, but I was like, I don't care. I'm tired of waiting for it. King Diamond Abigail. Probably even my third favorite King Diamond album. Probably, yeah, them, Conspiracy, and this one. And then Fatal Portrait, probably. Love this album. I love the old King Diamond. I love the lineup from this album. I mean, you got Mickey D, you got King, you got Michael Denner, you got you got uh, Timmy Hansen, and of course, Andy Rock, who's one of my favorite guitar players of all time. I can't wait till November 4th. He's coming to Tucson, Arizona. I'm driving four hours to go see King Diamond. It's gonna be awesome. So uh, maybe I'll bring this and have him sign it. Actually, I have his autograph from 98. I went to Milwaukee Metal Fest and he signed my, uh, a couple of my things from them. All right, here's another one I've been looking for forever. I've never seen this in the store. The original of this is pretty sought after. This is a reissue. It's on Black on Black Records, which I really like, even though it's going to be it's a double album. The first al the first album of the double album is just the Red Hero album, and the second album is like some demos. Heathen, Breaking the Silence. I've wanted this album forever. I finally have it. I really want Victims of Deception. In fact, I gotta add that to my list. I've been, I've been sending out a list to some folks here, and uh, I need to add Victims of Deception to my list. But uh, yeah, this album is a classic. A lot of people don't like. They like. They think Victims is better. I'm kind of like. Sometimes I like this one more. Sometimes I like Victims more. This is the first album I heard from them. I saw a video on a on a uh, hard and heavy VHS. They were playing uh, Open the Grave live and it was like wow this is awesome so i was instantly hooked i mean, I mean this is classic bay area thrash and this is some of the most classic bay area thrash uh, as, as you know the altus from heathen is now an exodus and if you guys run any of you do the 70,000 tons of metal cruise these guys are going to be on and i've never seen heathen i've been a fan since like 95 so it's going to be awesome to see them i hear they're still really good live there's another one that I don't have in any format, at least a physical format. Death Leprosy. This isn't a death album I, I like as much as some of the others, but for 20 bucks, I was like, I can't go wrong with this. I mean, it's the, it's the relapse reissue. It needs a new sleeve, actually. But uh, this sold out really quick on any internet store you go on. So to see this left over in a, in a store was pretty cool. So death, this has pulled the plug on, which is probably Death's most known song. But, uh, yeah, cool. Glad to have that one. Here's a bargain bin one I found, which I actually don't have this one either. I have all these other albums, but I don't have this one. Black Label Society's uh, Sonic Brew. This is, I believe, his first album from 90, 99. This, of course, is a reissue or something. Um, it says it's the original. No, no, that's a reissue. Anyways, it was like eight and a half dollars. You can't go wrong. Um... Sonic Brew, Black Label Society. Excuse me. 
I just saw these guys a couple weeks ago. They were awesome. All right, last but not least. This is one I've wanted for a long time, and the original of this goes for retarded money on Discogs and eBay. So uh, I figured $34 for this would be worth it. Speaking of Alice in Chains, Alice in Chains Dirt. I remember when this album came out in 1992. I bought the CD. The song Wood came out on the soundtrack, the single soundtrack. And I remember that summer of 92 just listening to that song over and over and over again. This is a, this is a classic record. This isn't my favorite Alice in Chains record, though. My favorite Alice in Chains record is Facelift, then this one, then probably Jar of Flies. But this is an awesome album nonetheless. It's on that, they put the ticker on it, but it's on that, that reissue label, what's it called? Oh hell, what's it called? Music on Vinyl, that's what it's called. So this was a reissue from 2009, actually. So it's been sitting in the store for that long. I'm amazed to find this. This, this sold out really quick. So, uh, Alice in Chains Dirt, classic record. Rip Wayne Staley, one of my, the best, in my opinion, the best Seattle grunge band. Now, the best band that's ever come from Seattle, of course, as you know, it's Queen's Right. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so that's, that's pretty much my, uh, my vinyl roundup for this week. Um, I don't think I'm gonna buy any vinyl for a while. I've kind of been on a binge the last couple weeks with the Albuquerque Record Show and then this trip to, uh, to, uh, Amarillo, so. If I, if I do buy some stuff, I'll definitely post a video. If not, wait a couple weeks, and then I'll probably have some stuff. But uh, that's it, guys. Let me know if you guys want any trades. I'm always wanting to trade. Hit me up. Peace.